When you have that desire or biological urge to ejaculate, you have to pause and you have to take a step back and you have to take a breath and decide to reorient your system back to pleasure and connection and your commitment as the point of sex and not going towards ejaculatory orgasm. Hello, friend, and welcome to the Sex Upgraded Podcast, a podcast for men all about sex, where we'll combine real, authentic, and down-to-earth conversations about sex, life, and relationships with some pretty wild personal stories and practical how-to episodes as well with guest experts from around the world to help you have the most amazing sex life you can possibly have. My name is Taylor, and I'll be your host on this journey, and it's my goal with each episode to give you practical, actionable things you can start doing today to improve your sex life and your entire life, because a thriving sex life will help you thrive in all areas of your life. So let's begin today's episode by starting with a deep breath in through the nose into the belly together, exhaling with an audible sigh, and let's get into today's episode. This episode is all about premature ejaculation, and we're going to go in depth into a a bunch of the most common causes of premature ejaculation so you can really understand this topic. And then we're going to go into what you can do about it if this is something you're experiencing so you don't have to experience it anymore. My name is Taylor and I'm a sex coach and educator for men. And I used to really struggle with premature ejaculation for years intensely to the point where I would even avoid women completely that I was attracted to because I was afraid of eventually possibly having sex with them and then being the guy that would come too soon. And I was that guy. I would regularly come in 30 seconds or a minute or less. And it really impacted my confidence as a man, my identity as a man, and my sexual confidence, and my entire life, honestly, I felt like a sexual mess and impotent and weak. And oh, yeah, <laughs> that was a rough period of my life. Uh, and so, so I get it. And that's my backstory. And I'm coming to you today to be your host for this episode, having personally experienced all of the most common causes of premature ejaculation that I'm going to share with you. And so I'm not sharing these from a place of like, better than this is what you need to do. It's like, I've experienced these things and I get it and I get the struggle and I want you to succeed and have the sex life you want because it is possible to overcome premature ejaculation and it is possible to have sex for an hour and have multiple non-ejaculatory orgasms. Even if you're somebody who right now is regularly ejaculating in 30 seconds or less in sex, you can retrain your system to experience the wonders of extended lovemaking and non-ejaculatory orgasm. And in this episode, I want to share with you some of the most common causes of things that are keeping you from being able to do that and some techniques to help you get there. So if you want to know how to last longer in bed, if you want to understand deeply what causes premature ejaculation, and if you want to know how to cure premature ejaculation naturally without any pharmaceuticals, this episode is for you. I'm going to share 13 of the most common causes and I'm actually going to I'm going to touch on those briefly right now. Just going to run through those as a list to give you a preview of what's to come through this episode and then throughout the rest of this episode we can go into those in depth. So here's a quick outline of the 13 most common causes of premature ejaculation. Number 1, poor masturbation habits. How we masturbate impacts how we have sex. And this is a direct impact on how quickly we ejaculate. Number two, unhealthy habits around porn consumption, around watching porn. How we watch porn and the, the, the regularity and frequency that we watch porn and then what we're doing while we're watching porn, all that impacts how quickly we ejaculate. Number three, you see ejaculation as pleasure and as the point of sex versus seeing pleasure and connection as the point of sex. And so if you're seeing ejaculation as the point of sex, ejaculation is going to have this gravity that pulls you towards it in the sexual experience. And it's going to be really hard for you to have sex for an extended period of time without ejaculating because ejaculation is the goal and your mind is attached to that and it will pull you. 
the fourth most common cause of premature ejaculation that I'm going to talk about today is a hyper focus on sensations in your penis during sex. And we reinforce this through masturbation, through watching porn, through our beliefs. And basically, if you're focused primarily on your penis and the sensations in your penis while you're having sex, you're missing out on an entire world of pleasure in the rest of your body. And you're going, you're going to go towards ejaculation more quickly because you're not focusing on your heart or your belly or the smell and the sound and the sight of your lover and the connection that you share. So we're going to expand what we're focusing on. A fifth common cause of premature ejaculation is actually doing too many Kegels. Doing too many Kegels can send you towards ejaculation, believe it or not, instead of uh, making you able to last longer. It's a Kegels are all over the internet right now as the sort of cure all for premature ejaculation. But the interesting thing is if you squeeze, 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 squeeze constantly, and you really strengthen those muscles and you don't do anything to relax them and release them, then that's going to put your pelvic floor into a state of tension, constant tension and tension leads to ejaculation. So we need to actually release and relax our pelvic floor. Next common cause is there's too much tension in your entire body. So similar to your pelvic floor, if you have tension in your back, in your shoulders, in your legs, in your hips, in your thighs, all of that is going to make it more difficult for you to have extended sex, sexual experiences without ejaculating. And you know, even if you're somebody who lives a relatively stress-free lifestyle, if you're not regularly stretching your body and, and bringing blood flow into your pelvis and hips and all these different areas, it's going to be hard for you to have an extended lovemaking session. And that'll, you know, increasing your flexibility will allow you to be stronger, to be able to have more stamina to hold yourself in these sexual positions as well. So that's a big one. Number seven is too much stress in life in general. If you're really stressed, your body can seek a relief from that stress through ejaculatory orgasm. Number eight, performance anxiety. If in the sexual experience you are worried about premature ejaculation, if you're, if you're concerned about how quickly you're going to ejaculate, you're going to push yourself towards ejaculation. So try to relax your mind and take some pressure off. And we're going to go much more in depth as to how to do this later in this episode. This is just a short little preview right now. Number nine, this is a big one. A very common cause of premature ejaculation is that you are not breathing deeply enough in the sexual experience. So right now, let's all take a deep breath in together through the nose into the belly. And exhale with a sigh. Let's do another one. Exhale with an audible sigh. And one more. I just talked a lot. Do you notice how just after taking those three deep breaths, there's a shift in the quality of your consciousness and awareness and your body? That can be brought into sex and deepened and expanded in really beautiful ways that, that expand your capacity to experience more pleasure without ejaculating. Breath is huge. A few more here. Number 10, you're starting off sex too fast and you're doing too much thrusting. A lot of porn and a lot of habits will lead us to just bam, 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 jackhammer in the sexual experience. And really there's a lot of beauty and a lot of pleasure to be had by going slow and by finding different sexual positions that don't involve going fully in and out of your partner constantly, but involve some form of grinding. Those can be incredibly pleasurable and much less likely to push you towards ejaculatory orgasm. Number 11 is that you have not developed the mental resolve to commit to not ejaculating. This is kind of a head trip, but basically what it means is that you need to do some more practice developing the willpower to not go towards an ejaculatory orgasm when you get the thought or the urge to ejaculate in sex. You need to take a pause, take a breath, and reorient towards pleasure as the goal in the sexual experience. 
We'll get more into depth uh, later in this episode as well about that. Number 12, you have a fear of deep intimacy and ejaculatory orgasm is an escape route to avoid deep intimacy and opening your heart. This is a huge thing that a lot of guys struggle with and myself included. And fear of deep intimacy can actually cause you to experience premature ejaculation. Boom, mind blown. (laughs) I bet you didn't expect that on this list, but it's very real. And that brings us to the final common cause that we're going to talk about today of premature ejaculation, which is that premature ejaculation is actually a false problem. Yeah. What do I mean by that? I mean that maybe premature ejaculation is not actually the problem itself, but it's the symptom of a larger problem, kind of like everything else here. But for example, maybe you're not actually happy in your relationship. And maybe instead of getting into an extended, beautifully connective sexual experience with your partner, you ejaculate too quickly or you ejaculate quickly because your system is afraid of being in a deeply connected space with somebody that you know you don't actually want to be in relationship with. Maybe you'd rather be single. Maybe you'd rather would be with somebody else. Or maybe you don't even want to be having sex in that moment. And ejaculation is an escape route. Let's take a deep breath in. (sighs) Yeah. How about that? I've experienced that for sure. I've experienced everything on this list. And so we're going to circle back around to the beginning right now and go more in depth into some of these. And I invite you to treat this episode like a mini workshop and take some notes along the way if anything stands out for you. And just a bit of context about this episode, the Eros Rising podcast, this podcast that you're listening to, has three different kinds of episodes. The first kind is interviews with guest experts from around the world. The second kind of episode is personal stories from my life, things like when I had my first tantric orgasm and how I had my first amazing threesome. And the third kind of episode is practical sex episodes. That's almost a tongue twister. Practical sex episodes <laughs> like this one, uh, where we're going to, going to look at practical how-to guides and what is guides around sex. So what causes premature ejaculation is one of those. And you can search through all those different kinds of episodes on my website. There'll be a link in the description of this episode for that. And this episode in particular is brought to you by the hundreds of men who've gone through my orgasmic mastery course. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. It's been an honor to share that journey with you. And I'll share more about that at the end of this podcast. But cool to sponsor your own podcast and be sponsored by all those men. All right. So circling back around, let's take one more deep breath. Hmm. Common causes of premature ejaculation. More in depth. We're actually going to start with one that I didn't name when we went through it the first time and talk about the evolutionary advantage of ejaculating quickly. Think about this. Tens of thousands of years ago, 100,000 years ago, whatever, back in time before modern civilization, it wouldn't be useful for us to ejaculate, to need 20 to 30 minutes of sex to be able to ejaculate. That wouldn't be advantageous for us as a species, right? We've got to procreate. We have to have sex and ejaculate and perpetuate the species as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible. And if it took us 30 minutes to ejaculate, we'd be much more likely to be killed or eaten by a lion or by some warring nation of other humans that didn't like us, you know? So the more quickly we are able to ejaculate, the more easily we're able to perpetuate our species, which some argue is the main biological imperative of our entire existence. And so we come from a long line of ancestors of premature ejaculators because (laughs) it's evolutionarily advantageous for us to do that, for the perpetuation of our species. So congratulations if you're somebody who has premature ejaculation because that means you are much more likely to procreate and produce offspring than somebody who takes an hour to ejaculate. I just like to say that up front and honor that because it's real, you know, and it's where we come from. I'm reminded (laughs) if you followed me on Instagram a few years ago, 
I went to Thailand and Malaysia with an ex-partner of mine, and we watched some monkeys uh, out in a park, and we watched these two monkeys have sex, and this one monkey just ran up to the other monkey. The other monkey put its tail up, and the, the original monkey just like, boom, entered it, bam, two seconds, done. Not even two seconds, two pumps in a second, and it ejaculated. And if evolution is your thing, which it's my thing, um, we came from that. <laughs> we evolved from that, you know? So if you're ejaculating in 30 seconds, you're lasting 30 times longer than how we used to. So yeah, congrats. All right. And even though that is a biological advantage to ejaculate quickly, we all have the potential to be epic lovers. And yes, that means you. You have the potential to be an epic incredible lover too, and you're not damned to a lifestyle of premature ejaculation. And our potential is limited by our beliefs and by the habits that we've uh, done by our behaviors in our life around sex. So if you're 25, 35, 45, you've got one, two, three decades, 10, 20, 30 years or more of programming that you've given yourself around sex and around masturbation and watching porn. So this is a lot to reprogram and it can take some time and it's worth it. I promise you it's 100% worth it. All you have to do is unlearn some behaviors, create some new ones and actually apply them to your life. You can't just intellectually learn this stuff. You have to actually practice it. So getting into the 13 common causes of premature ejaculation again, in depth. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> All right. This section is for people who really, really want to deeply understand this topic and figure out some ways, if you're experiencing any of these things, to course correct and create a new action plan so you don't suffer from premature ejaculation anymore. Number one, poor masturbation habits. What do I mean by that? I mean that when most guys masturbate, we sit still or we lay down on a bed and we're our body is almost perfectly still and our hand moves up and down really quickly like this and we focus almost entirely on our penis and we're not breathing deeply and we're not moving our body and we get boom come we try to get to ejaculatory orgasm really quickly because that's what we've learned as pleasure and if we masturbate to ejaculation in a minute or two or three minutes then that is what our sexual response system sees as normal. And so if you're ejaculating, or if you're masturbating regularly to ejaculation in two minutes, then your sexual response system learns that arousal, erection, means master, it means pleasure and then ejaculation in two minutes. And that absolutely will translate to the sexual experience. So when you start to have sex with somebody, your body is going to try to go towards ejaculation in two minutes because how you masturbate is a training ground for your sexual experience. And simultaneously, if you're moving, if you're not moving your body and you're sitting still, then that's probably in large part how you're going to be having sex as well. And I've talked to a lot of people and I've heard from a lot of people that when they have sex with a guy, they're not even really sure if he's enjoying it until he comes because he's not so he's not so physically expressive and he's not moving around so much. And then all of a sudden, bam, he starts ejaculating and he's having seven seconds of intense pleasure and oh, oh, oh his body is moving around and convulsing and then it's done. So I have guys start masturbating for a minimum of 20 minutes at a time. Don't masturbate for two minutes and then ejaculate anymore if you're wanting to overcome premature ejaculation. Start to masturbate for at least 20 minutes at a time. And while you're doing it, move your body and breathe deeply and make sounds. All right. Next common cause of premature ejaculation is unhealthy porn habits. And so why do I say this instead of just saying porn? I say this because I don't think porn is inherently bad just like I don't think certain weapons are inherently bad, or just like I don't think certain things are inherently bad or good. It's how we use these things that, that makes them bad or good. And porn is incredibly dangerous for us. It's super appealing and mind-blowingly sexy. And right now you could get on your phone or computer and see any sexual act you wanted to see. And it's incredibly stimulating. 
And it has been shown through research to impact our brain like drugs, like an addictive drug. And we actually have an addictive response to this stimuli that is porn. And porn pushes us towards premature ejaculation for a few different reasons. One of the main reasons is that it so incredibly hyper-focuses on ejaculation. Like most porn videos, the whole point is to experience the journey to get to ejaculation. And once ejaculation happens, boom, it's over and it's done. And then you go on to the next video. And there are even, you know, there's cum shot compilations. And this is like the epitome of this. And each time you're watching this, you're seeing a guy in pleasure. You're a guy in pleasure who's ejaculating. You're making an association between ejaculation and pleasure and ejaculation as pleasure. Rarely in porn do we see videos of men uh, just fully embodied lovemaking with their partner and having an extended experience. No, we see videos and close-ups of their genitals interacting, of his penis going into their mouth or whatever, and then he ejaculates and then it's over. And this is a thing that really impacts us. And also porn is modern porn it's camera angle, camera angle, camera angle, new scene, new scene, new scene, next highly stimulating thing after highly stimulating thing onto the next video, onto the next video. And it's so incredibly stimulating. There is zero way a human can compete with the level of stimulation that porn gives your eyes and your brain. It's just not possible. And so if you're having sex with somebody and they're not changing camera angles every five seconds, a minute and a half in, you might start to lose your erection because they're not changing, they're not changing, they're not changing. Or you might ejaculate if that's something that you've programmed yourself to do, because most people don't watch porn for an extended period of time. Most people watch porn and they sit there and they masturbate and then they ejaculate and then they're done. So we need to create some new habits and some new patterns around this. And I recommend going for an extended period of time without watching porn at all and starting this new masturbation practice if you're trying to overcome premature ejaculation of not masturbating for any amount of time less than 20 minutes before you ejaculate. All right, moving on to number three. And this is a com very common cause of premature ejaculation, and it's around your mindset. And it's that you see ejaculation as being pleasure itself, and you also see ejaculation as the point of sex. So like I said earlier, a lot of us haven't really gone into the amazing depths of pleasure that are available for sex in the area of sex. If we use the scale, you know, zero to 100, 100 being ejaculatory orgasm, 95 being the point of return. Most of us, when we masturbate, we edge, we go to 85 or above, and then we ejaculate. And we start to orient ourselves around that level of stimulation as being sexual pleasure. And we're missing out on the whole range of sexual pleasure that's in the 30% range to the 85% range. And that is vast. That is vast. And the problem is when you get into the sexual experience and you're oriented towards the range of 85 to 95% on that scale of being sexual pleasure, it's going to be really challenging for you to keep yourself from ejaculating when you're actually having sex with another person because you're not in control of everything that they do. They have hips, they have a chest, they have hair, they have breath, they have sounds, and their movements can pull you, you know, really quickly towards that ejaculatory point. And if you see ejaculation as the point of sex, which I used to, um, gosh, man, it's almost even embarrassing to say still to this day, but I remember multiple sexual experiences where I was having sex with somebody and I did not ejaculate. And in my mind, they didn't make me come. And it was pointless in my mind at that time. And I got mad. And I even said to one of them, like, well, I could have just done that myself if I'm not if you're not gonna make me come. And oh man, what a shitty thing to say. And what a shitty thing to receive from somebody, you know? And you know, hopefully you're not doing that. If you are, like change that. It's not helping anybody. Um, and have some compassion for yourself if the if you've thought that ejaculation is the point of sex and then B take a step back and, and realize that there's a whole other realm of sexual pleasure that's available. That's not ejaculation and start to allow yourself to explore that. Start to allow yourself to explore that. It's really beautiful. <sighs> yeah. I would say, 
I will say that by far my most incredible sexual experiences have happened when I've almost, well, it's, they've happened when I've consciously made the choice to either delay ejaculation or to not have an ejaculation at all during the sexual experience. I'm talking like mind blowing, non ejaculatory, orgasmic, cosmic sexual experiences, you know? And so part of the journey to get there is to reorient your mind around the reality that sex is about more than just ejaculatory orgasm. And I know this is probably, this might sound a little bit ridiculous to keep stating it, but even if you're not consciously thinking this, some part of your body subconsciously is experiencing this because of all the porn that you've watched or because of the way that you've masturbated to ejaculation quickly or because of the way that you've had sex repeatedly in the past. Like This is in your system. So we need to develop some new patterns and beliefs around this. Let's take a deep breath in. <sighs> mm, good stuff. Number four, hyper-focus on sensations in your penis during sex. I don't think we need to talk so much about this one. We named a lot of it in the beginning. Just to say again that there's a huge amount of pleasure that's available, sexual pleasure, in the rest of your body that is not on the head of your penis. And I highly, highly, highly encourage you to start exploring this in your self-pleasure sessions, aka masturbation sessions, and in your lovemaking in general. Because when you do that, you're going to be oriented towards pleasure in the rest of your body and you're going to start experiencing it. And this is a gateway to be able to begin to experience full body orgasms, full body ejaculatory orgasms and full body non-ejaculatory orgasms. Number five, too many Kegels. Too many Kegels all over the internet right now. And for years, actually, Kegels have been touted as the cure all answer for premature ejaculation. And they're not. Yeah. I will say they are incredibly helpful in some regards. But at the same time, like I said earlier, if you're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing your pelvic floor constantly without some sort of, um, healthful oppositional exercise, you could say, then you're going to be in a state of tension in your pelvic floor regularly. And that will lead towards premature ejaculation, uh, which, you know, for the context of this episode, I'm talking about ejaculating before you want to. That could be 30 seconds or five minutes. If you're ejaculating before you want to, that's premature. And so what do I mean by a healthful oppositional exercise? Let's say, for example, you're going to the gym and you're doing bicep curls. You're doing a hundred bicep curls followed by another hundred bicep curls, followed by the next day you do 300 bicep curls, followed by the next day you do a ton of bicep curls and you're not doing any tricep exercises. Your arm is going to be fucked up. <laughs> Just to put it bluntly, your arm is going to be fucked and you're not going to have a balanced arm. You're not going to have a balanced arm. And you probably will injure yourself, honestly. You give yourself tendonitis and strain yourself. And so in the pelvic floor, it's equally as important to develop flexibility, flexibility and malleability. And so I highly encourage guys to do yoga poses and stretches that open up the pelvic floor, that open up the hips, that open up the legs, that open up the genital region. And then you can breathe deeply down into that region as well. Let's take a deep breath and see if you can breathe into your genitals. <sighs> and do those breaths while you're stretching. And when I say breathe into your genitals, I don't mean like you're actually breathing down into your penis and it inflates like a balloon. I'm talking about breathing into your pelvic region, your pelvic bowl. And you can actually look at some diaphragms of your organs and your diaphragms, diagrams of your organs and your diaphragm to see that when you take a deep breath in, your diaphragm extends downward and it creates some pressure that expands your pelvic floor. And you can feel this if you place your fingers on your perineum, which is the area between your testicles and your anus. So I encourage you to try lying down and breathing deeply, placing your fingers there to see if you can feel that expansion. All right. Ah, yeah. That's, that's a big one. It's a big one. I remember being in a workshop in Thailand years ago 
and it was a tantric yoga workshop. And the instructor asked everybody in the class to close your eyes and pay attention to your pelvic floor and see if you can relax it at all. See if there's any relaxation you can bring to your pelvic floor. If there's any tightness at all, relax it. And then he asked us all to open our eyes and he said, okay, now if you could relax your pelvic floor some, raise your hand. 95% of the people in this room raised their hand. That's really indicative of this state that we're living in. Most of us have tight pelvic floors constantly. So then we went on through the workshop. Five or 10 minutes later, he asked us to pause and to pay attention to that area of our body again. 95% of the people's hands went up again. That means in those five minutes, all of our pelvic floors got tight again. And that was a huge wake up moment for me. And I started paying attention to my pelvic floor, just walking around in my daily life and noticing, wow, I'm tight there constantly. So I started practicing um, releasing that and bringing intentional relaxation in there. Super, super important. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we'll pause there. I think that point has been made. We can move on to number six, which is excess tension in your entire body is another very common cause of premature ejaculation. Tension leads to ejaculation. Excess tension leads to premature ejaculation. So just like tension in your pelvic floor will lead to ejaculation, tension in your entire body will lead to this as well. So I really encourage any guy who's on a sexual journey of any kind to start doing some yoga practice. Start, do, start doing some qigong or qigong, however you want to call it. Start doing some stretching of your legs and your pelvis and your hips to create openness there and to create flexibility and to encourage blood flow throughout your entire body. This is really, really important. And so I want to ask you right now, like, are you somebody who this applies to? Could you have more spaciousness and flexibility in your legs and your hips and your pelvic floor? What's preventing you from doing so? Yeah, I'm going to call you out right now and say that you and myself could probably experience and benefit a lot from experiencing more stretching in that region and more flexibility in our bodies in general. Because if we're tight, it's hard for pleasure to flow throughout our entire body. And it's hard for us to get into states of embodied lovemaking. It's just difficult. And so we're more rigid and more still in the sexual experience and that will that rigidity and that stillness will bring will bring our attention and our awareness back down to our penis, and that will cause us to ejaculate prematurely. <sighs> yeah. So even if you have a mostly stress free life, if your body isn't healthy, flexible, and thriving, it will be really challenging for you to have an extended love making experience without ejaculating prematurely. So love your body, give your, give your body the gift of caring for it, really. You are alive right now and you don't know when you're going to die. It's like now is the time to take care of your body. Now is the time. <sighs> yes. Number seven. Another common cause of premature ejaculation is that you have too much stress in your life in general. Yeah, that's a big one. And it's an interesting one. Um, you might, it's, it's one of those things that you might not think of immediately, but let's use an example. Yesterday, I was on a coaching call with a client who was asking me for some techniques and tips on how to last longer because in, the, in his past, he was able to have sex for longer, but right now he was ejaculating prematurely regularly and it was adding a lot of uh, challenge to his life. And so we started talking about practices and techniques that he had done. And then I started asking him about his lifestyle. And he said that he was working constantly, like over 12 hours a day, multiple, you know, almost six or seven days a week, regu <clears throat> excuse me, regularly, and in charge of this huge business thing and carrying a lot of stress. And <laughs> yeah, in my mind immediately, and we talked about this, I thought, okay, no, no technique is going to actually help you avoid premature ejaculation because your system is so wound up. And so if your system is so wound up that you can't downregulate, if your nervous system can't enter into a state of deep relaxation, 
of course you're going to experience premature ejaculation because your system is looking for any possibility of getting a release. And biologically speaking, one of the most easily accessible and biologically known ways to get a release in your body is to ejaculate. So if you go into the sexual experience with all that tension and all that stress, boom, your body is going to seek that release in the easiest way that it knows and bam, you're going to get it. And you will get a relief from stress. Yeah, possibly, unless you go into a shame spiral because you ejaculated prematurely, which will add more stress to your life, which is a whole other it's a whole other topic, which will lead into number eight, uh, which is around performance anxiety. But just to say really quickly, what's worse than ejaculating before you want to? Entering into a shame spiral and self-judgment after ejaculating prematurely. like That is far worse than ejaculating prematurely, and it will damage your sexual relationship and romantic relationship far more than ejaculating prematurely. And it will damage your own relationship with yourself far more than ejaculating prematurely. So if you ejaculate prematurely, you've got to practice having compassion for yourself and love for yourself and practice staying in connection with yourself and with your partner. Don't tune out. Don't dissociate. Don't go have a sandwich. Stay in connection with your lover and breathe. And that brings us into number eight. And the eighth common cause of premature ejaculation is performance anxiety. And so if you're worried about ejaculating too quickly while you're having sex, you're probably going to ejaculate too quickly. God, man, I can tell you this from my own personal experience of years of struggling with this. As soon as I started to have sex, my anxiety would kick in around ejaculating too quickly. And then because my anxiety was there, I started to focus on trying to not ejaculate too quickly, which brought my focus to my penis, which brought my focus to not a connected sexual experience, which inevitably led to a very quick ejaculation. (sighs) Yeah. So this is a big one and it's tricky. It's really tricky to, to rid yourself of performance anxiety, but it's possible. I'm here to say that it is possible to take the pressure off. You got to take the pressure off. And one of the ways to do this, we're going to get into in the next one. uh, The next common cause is to breathe more deeply. Another way is to just go really slow in the beginning of the sexual experience. That's around number 10 in the common causes as well. And like we just talked about, another thing that can really contribute to this is you just relieving the pressure of ejaculating at all. So like if you do ejaculate too quickly, whatever, like it's not a big deal. You can keep being present with your lover and you can pleasure them and you can still be in the lovemaking experience. It'll take a little more work because you won't have as much zest for sure, but it's not the end of the world. You can stay in connection and probably you'll find that in five or 10 or 15 minutes, if you stay connected with them, if you stay connected with yourself and you stay in this compassionate place, your erection will come back and you'll pass through the refractory period and you'll be able to have more sex and you'll be able to last for longer. All right, moving on to number nine. Another common cause of premature ejaculation is that you or me or anybody, any guy is not breathing deeply enough. So paid attention to the quality of your breath during sex. Have you ever paid attention to the quality of your breath in general? What about in this moment right now? What is the quality of your breath in this moment right now? Notice it for a second. Are you breathing slowly with ease and intentionality into your belly? Or are you breathing up into your shoulders? Is your breath shallow? How you breathe throughout your daily life will impact your sexual experience and will impact the kind of breath that you do while you're having sex. So start to practice breathing more deeply throughout your day. And if you've ever paid attention to how you breathe right before you ejaculate, you'll notice that it does something like this. It kind of speeds up in this crescendo of intensity and rapidity and bam, then you ejaculate. 
So a trick, a couple tricks in the sexual experience. Number one is to breathe more slowly and deeply throughout the entire sexual experience and keep yourself from going into that shallow breathing because shallow, rapid breathing in sex can lead you towards ejaculatory orgasm. And what I like to encourage guys to do and what I personally practice is to uh, start breathing deeply as a practice as soon as I know that I'm being sexual. I'll start... Mm. Ah, breathing deeply and making sound with my lover. And I'll do that for at least 15 breaths. And ah, you'll notice that if you do this, there's almost, you can feel new pathways and new channels of sexual pleasure opening up in your body. And you'll feel your your ability for pleasure to move throughout more than just your penis. And breath, deep breathing can be a, a channel, a passageway, an opening for sexual pleasure to start moving through your entire body so you can start to experience full body orgasmic pleasure. Breath is huge. Breath is huge. And yes, it will feel a little unnatural at first to breathe rapidly. Well, to breathe, not rapidly, sorry, but to breathe deeply and consistently and make sound in the beginning. But that's okay. It's part of the practice. And I can almost guarantee you that your sexual partner will really enjoy you breathing that way and you making sounds. Because again, most people are not used to men <sighs> being really in their bodies during the sexual experience. And your animalistic nature, you being in your body like that will be a turn on for them and it will help you last longer in bed as well. All right. Number 10, another common cause of premature ejaculation is that you or me or anybody, we are starting sex off too quickly and we're doing too much thrusting all the way in and all the way out of our partners. Sex would have us believe, or sex, sorry. <laughs> Porn would have us believe that our partners want us to pound away and that the way to experience more pleasure in sex is to bam, 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 jackhammer. But this actually gets really old. And you know, if you keep doing it for a while, well, if you keep doing it for a while, one, you will probably go towards premature ejaculation. But if you make it past that, then the other thing that can happen through jackhammering is that you start to numb out. And this can happen for anybody with anybody, a penis or a vagina. And there's actually a lot of other pleasure to be had in different positions where you're grinding your bodies together. And maybe you find a position where your penis doesn't go in and out of your partner, but you can undulate in certain waves and ways that bring immense pleasure to both of you without having that intensive friction of pounding in and out. And so there's two things going on here. It's the speed of your motion and the kind of motion that you're doing. And so in addition to the kind of motion, transitioning from just pounding to <clears throat> undulating or rhythmic dancing, you could call it, also reducing the speed is a really great way to A, increase more pleasure into the sexual experience, B, more connection into the sexual experience, and C, <sighs> less direct stimulation on your penis that will lead to premature ejaculation. And I have sex with women, so I will speak to my experience with some women and say that a number of, well, I'd say the majority of sexual experiences that I've had with women where they're having an orgasm don't involve pounding, 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 but they involve some sort of slower, more deep, rhythmic, consistent almost musical type movement that involves some kind of an undulation, possibly with some in and out as well, but there's, it's not a pounding. Pounding is not the magic in sex. <laughs> it can be a fun thing to do sometimes, but it gets old. So yeah, I think that covers that. All right. On to the next one. Number 11. Another common cause of premature ejaculation is that you have not developed the mental resolve to commit to not ejaculating. And yeah, don't underestimate the power of your mind in your effort to heal your challenges with premature ejaculation. You can set a commitment to yourself before you start having sex that you're not going to ejaculate 
or that you're not going to ejaculate in a certain amount of time. To make a better commitment in a more positive affirmation style commitment, you could say, I'm going to have sex for 10 minutes without ejaculating, or I'm going to have sex for 10 minutes, period. I'm going to have penetrative sex for 10 minutes. And however you choose to get there, you could be going slow, you could be breathing deeply, go there. Stick with that commitment. Even if you need to stay still for two minutes, stick with that commitment and notice the magic that can happen when you are still. And notice, here's the real effort here. Here's the real work. When you have that desire or biological urge to ejaculate, you have to pause and you have to take a step back and you have to take a breath and decide to reorient your system back to pleasure and connection and your commitment as the point of sex and and not going towards ejaculatory orgasm. Because that pull, that gravity, that hook that the idea or the thought of ejaculation can have is massive. And it takes some serious self-leadership and self-discipline to to change that course and to choose not to ejaculate. And it's a muscle that you can strengthen over time. And so the more you exercise willpower, or you could call it self-leadership, the stronger that muscle becomes in all areas of your life. And like I said earlier, my most amazing sexual experiences I have ever had have all happened when I've either made the decision to delay ejaculation or to not have an ejaculatory orgasm at all during the sexual experience. Because then once that pressure is relieved, once that idea is relieved that I'm not going to have an ejaculatory orgasm, that opens up the doors Ah, to so much more. That's so much more. It's like there's another hallway. There's a door that opens to another hallway full of like 20 other doors of possibility. Whereas previously we were just in a hall, in one other hallway with just a couple doors and the main one leading to ejaculatory orgasm. You know, it's, it's that big of a deal. It's that big of a deal. All right, let's take another deep breath. Hmm. Getting close here, getting close to the end, but not the ejaculatory end. (laughs) Number 12, a very common yet not so commonly known cause of premature ejaculation is a fear of deep intimacy. Yeah. Sex can get intimate. Sex can be vulnerable. And... Once we make it through the initial part of having sex with somebody, the hot part, the sexy part, you could say, excuse me, once we make it through that part, then vulnerability can start to happen. Then we can actually start to really see each other, like deeply see each other for who they are, for who you are. You can be seen in a way that you're not seeing so clearly when you're in the hotness of sex. And that being seen can be really uncomfortable because it involves opening your heart and it involves being a real, authentic, vulnerable human. And so this is really scary for a lot of guys. And it was really scary for me too in the past. Like, It took me, you know, until my mid to late twenties to even be able to say, I love you to certain people like who are family members, even that's how afraid of intimacy I was. And this will absolutely show up in the sexual experience. If you're afraid of intimacy and you start to feel it, boom, oh, ejaculate. Now you have an escape route. Now it's done. You don't have to be seen. So some questions to ask yourself in this realm are, are you really comfortable with who you are? Are you comfortable with yourself? Are you comfortable with being fully seen by your lover in a moment of deep sexual passion and aliveness? Because, you know, what I'm going for here, what we're going for here is not just the ability to have sex for an extended period of time. Like that's beautiful and that's great. Yes. But it also can bring its own challenges. What we're going for here is the ability to have sex for an extended period of time combined with a deeper presence and openness and vulnerability in the sexual experience. And that's where this magic can happen. And that vulnerability and openness can only happen if you've done some work 
to open your heart, if you've done some work to be honest with yourself about who you are, about what your desires are, about if you're happy in your life or not, like all of these things matter. And in our culture, in our society, men, we've received a lot of programming that emotions are bad. Sadness is bad. Fear is bad. Anger is bad. Basically everything's bad unless you're killing somebody or providing, right? And what this does is it makes us push things down. And when we push anything down, if it's crying, if it's anger, if it's sadness, if it's jealousy, if we push it down, we're creating a pattern in our life of pushing things down and saying that being real is not okay. Being vulnerable is not okay. It's vulnerable to cry. It's vulnerable to feel grief. It's vulnerable to be jealous, to actually like allow that to be seen, you know? So if we're not letting ourselves experience that in our daily life, how can we possibly think we're going to allow ourselves to experience that in the sexual experience? And so again, ejaculation, ejaculatory orgasm can be a real quick way to get out of that. And a lot of times this is subconscious. Like you're not choosing intellectually to have an ejaculatory orgasm to get out of deep intimacy. It's something that happens more on a deeper emotional level, a deeper primal level of safety. It's really a safety thing. Like you're having an ejaculatory orgasm to feel safe. Kind of a head trip, right? But this, I've experienced this for sure. I remember having sex in this one instance and like we started to make it past a couple minutes and I was like, oh, that's cool. Wow, that's really exciting. (laughs) And then I remember the way this woman was looking at me just deeply into my eyes. Like she really wanted me there with her. It was one of my first experiences of this when I was younger and it was like fucking terrifying for me. Like I couldn't match it. I couldn't be there, you know? And so I just like ejaculated. I just ejaculated because I was like, whoa, too much. I can't do it. Uh, Too vulnerable, too scary, too real. I'm out. Peace. (sighs) Yeah. And she was disappointed. And I think, you know, I missed out on what could have been a really incredible sexual experience because I was afraid to really go there. And she was there with her heart open and I just couldn't do it. And it took me a while to, to, be able to open my heart uh, in those realms. And I want to share a tool with you if this is something you you think you might be experiencing. The communication modality called nonviolent communication is amazing. It's great for this. The title nonviolent communication isn't so great. And the guy who came up with this whole system himself says that he doesn't like the title of it. But the actual modality is incredible. And there's a book uh, on nonviolent communication that I recommend. And basically what this did for me, <clears throat> I studied this intensely for a few years. It gave me a language and a vocabulary and a means to understand my internal emotional landscape and it gave me tools to communicate about it with my lovers, with my partners, with my family, with my friends, my business people. And it gave me... Uh, tools to yeah communicate about it and to experience it and to actually allow these things to come through my body in a healthy way in a healthful way that was actually productive for society you know and it's so valuable this this communication modality has fundamentally changed my life and the lives of I'd say all my best friends actually here in Asheville where I live we've been uh, we've had the great benefit of there being a guy named Steve Torma here who has taught nonviolent communication to a lot of people in person. And he does online classes as well. So I'll put a little link for him in the show notes as well, because the work that he does that he helps people with, it's, it's really incredible, incredible stuff. All right. Didn't expect to bring that last little piece in there, but Hey, it came through. (sighs) All right. Last one. Number 13, another common cause of premature ejaculation is that it's actually a false problem. What do I mean by that? I mean that the premature ejaculation is actually a symptom of something deeper going on. And it's kind of like all the things we've talked about earlier, right? Premature ejaculation is not actually the cause of premature ejaculation. It's the symptom of something else. But in this last section, just want to bring awareness to a few things. And I said some of these earlier, but just to say them again, one of the biggest 
things that could fall into this category is if you are not actually happy or satisfied in the relationship that you're in. And so you use ejaculating, you subconsciously, your system subconsciously uses pre ejaculating as a way to get out of a deeply connective experience with somebody who you don't want to be deeply connective with in that way. I've been there. I've experienced it. I've talked to other guys who have no shame in it. It's a growth journey. And if this is happening for you, please be honest with yourself about it. Making a relationship transition can be incredibly difficult and incredibly confronting. And man, yeah, some of the hardest experiences of my life. And ultimately, some of the most transformational and empowering experiences of my life because I, I went into them fully. I went into them fully. Eventually, I didn't do that in my early 20s, but later on when I went through some traumatic breakups, I decided to really do some deep dives into my challenge areas, into my attachment styles, into my codependency issues, like all this stuff. And ah, yeah, super, super, super important to be aware of that and to do this work and to give yourself the time and space if you're going through a breakup to do this work. Um, and the work being looking at your attachment styles, looking at your shadow, looking at your codependency, all this stuff. And there's an amazing book. I think it's called Conscious Uncoupling um, that I read when I went through my major traumatic breakup a, you know, a handful of years ago that totally changed my life and, and really helped me move through that in a good way. I would highly recommend that book. I'll put that in the show notes as well. And one other thing I'll say here, uh, an organization that really helped me move beyond my codependency challenges is this organization called ISTA, the International School for Temple Arts. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I'll say that their workshops, I think, helped. Yeah, they're going through their retreats, their workshops, their basically seven day rituals, you could call it, helped me overcome my challenges with codependency more than anything else, more than talk therapy, more than any book, more than anything else. Just like, bam, you know, really ripped, ripped myself open in a scary, <laughs> but ultimately healing and really positive way. And really helped me build myself back up from a place of, of personal sovereignty and empowerment and, and ownership, honestly of all the challenges that I've experienced in relationship. So I'd recommend them also with a caveat that it's not the cheapest thing in the world and it's really fucking intense <laughs> what happens there. And it's probably more edgy than what most people uh, would be comfortable with. But you're listening to this podcast. You're not most people. You're not most people. So you'd probably be into it if you've made it this far. <sighs> Oh man, what a good, good exploration. Let's take a deep breath in together through the nose. I would say here at this point, I planned to say, I have a free ejaculation control guide on my website. <laughs> Go to it and it'll help you overcome premature ejaculation. And I think most of what I covered in this podcast is actually in that guide. Actually, no, with the exception, there are some useful things in there as well. So I'll link to that beneath this, uh, not beneath this video. I'll link to that in this show notes as well. My free ejaculation control guide, check it out. It's really useful. And also if you know that you want to go on a deep dive and reprogram your entire sexual response system to be able to have non-ejaculatory orgasms, to be able to make love for as long as you want and really feel uh, just fully confident and alive as your powerful sexual self, then I invite you to join my orgasmic mastery course. It's a really incredible journey. Many hundreds of men have gone through it and have had great results. I'll put a link beneath this video. I'll put a link in the show notes as well for that. And it comes with all kinds of really good benefits as well too. Like for example, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a live lesson from a kink and BDSM expert only for people in the orgasmic mastery course or who have gone through it before. So if you join, you'll get access to that as well. 
And yeah, I'm going to end there and say thank you, friend, so much, so, so, so much for being here in this journey of this topic, this exploration of premature ejaculation and this exploration of sex in general. And yeah, I'm just grateful, grateful to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you lots of success and pleasure in your life, in your sexual relationships. And if anything in this episode really stuck out for you, please shoot me a message on Instagram. Uh, Shoot me an email. Let me know. And please share this podcast with anyone who you think would benefit. And cheers to your success and your pleasure. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you in the next episode.